<clears throat> Not quite yet. It says live on Facebook on my computer. There we go. Hello, everyone. Good morning. It is Tuesday, March the 24th, and we are coming to you from our homes. I am Jen Bordeaux, the Director of Public Relations with New Direction Family Law, and I'm joined by these two lovely ladies, the partners of the firm, Sarah Hink and Elizabeth Stevenson. Hello, and good morning. Good morning. Um, we thought we would, you know, during COVID-19 and everything that's going on, there's a lot of uncertainty, period. So that means that there's a lot of uncertainty surrounding family law issues now, too. Um, so we thought we would start by chatting a little bit about child custody and maybe how COVID-19 or coronavirus is affecting that. So as you're watching, if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot them out and we'll see if we can get them answered for you. Um, to kick it off, we'll just head right into it. Um, during this time, do we have to stick to, if you have a custody schedule, do you have to stick to that? Take it away, ladies. <laughs> Um, I just want to say, just right off the bat, um, one, we're open, we're taking, you know, we're still taking clients, we're, we're working with our clients, so this is all new, uncharted territory, so there, as Sarah and I were talking about this morning, as lawyers always say, it depends, um, and so there's really no, I don't think there's a right answer, we can give you the best advice that we can, um, but is there a specific answer, it may be specific to your situation, so um, what we say today um, may not apply to you um, in that way, but, but we'll do the best we can in that respect. So Sarah, what would you what would you say to that question if a client asked you that? I did just say yes. So that's the general first answer is yes, but we have to look at each case separately and um, each custody case is different. If you have a court order, then you might have supervised visitation in the court order that's supposed to take place at, you know, kids together, that sort of place. That's not going to be able to happen right now. Right, and I have a case like that where they're closed. So what we're trying to do is maybe do a, a FaceTime or a video um, visitation so that they still have that contact with the other parent, but if, if it can't be supervised, at least they can have some contact and have some conversation about that. Right, I think that's the best way to go about it right now. And I think everyone, depend, no matter your situation, the best is to stay calm communicate with your co-parent to try and navigate this new area together because this is something we haven't faced before. Right. Um, no one really contemplated the circumstance when they drafted the custody order or the custody agreement. We have nothing in any custody order or separation <laughs> agreement that speaks to a pandemic. I can, <laughs> yeah. somebody there will be now. We will now, but. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, what's the difference? You, we have these different orders. You know, Some states are doing shelter in place. Sometimes there's mandated quarantines. What do you do in that situation? Right, and we were we were talking about that this morning too, and sort of my take on that is a shelter in place is you can still go out and you can do necessary important things. So I think it, if it, that's in place that you still can do an exchange mm -hmm. going from parent home to parent home. I wouldn't go into you know a place where there's a lot of people and do an exchange by any means. Right. But I think you can still under a shelter in place um, do the exchange. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's right. Sort of what I would, would say to um, a client of mine, as far as the quarantine goes, um, I think that that is you are isolated, you are not allowed um, to go out, but certainly we're not anywhere uh, at that point. We're not, but now. there are cases where I think you know, when we're speaking about this, being informed by the news, the same news that most of y'all are, but it sounds like if you start to have the symptoms and you reach out and you get tested, it might take, you know, seven days to receive your test results back or some, some amount of time. And right. Time, they say that you are supposed to quarantine. So there might be individual cases of that that we aren't aware of around North Carolina. So if that's the case and the child's with the quarantine parent, I'm not sure, you know, aside from getting that child tested and somehow removed, you really have to listen to the healthcare professionals in that case. Right, right. And go about it day by day. Right, and I, and I would hope that, um, you know, parents that even aren't able to co-parent very well in normal situations, this has sort of ratcheted that up. And so I hope that you know, in some way, this can help bring parents together so that they can learn to co-parent. It sounds weird, but it sounds counterintuitive. But I have seen that happen, that people are more... <laughs> what happens when you work at home? <laughs> so I'm really encouraging my, you know, clients to talk to the other parent. Like, we can't micromanage everything for you. You've got to do what's right for your family in some ways. So I really am encouraging 
parents to reach out to the other one and work on ways that they can do it in a safe um, manner where each of them feels comfortable in making that exchange. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, we do have someone that's tuned in and has said hi from California. Hi. Um, <laughs> so hi, Alexa. Thanks for tuning in. With that, we probably should say that, of course, everything you guys are mentioning is from North Carolina law. You can't exactly, buy it on exactly. other states, but just in general, it's probably good practice as far as co-parenting. Correct. Correct. And I apologize um, for the dogs. <laughs> Sorry, barking. No apologies that. necessary. We're fine. <laughs> We're rolling with that. <laughs> um, Alexis did just ask us a question, which kind of ties into something we wanted to touch base on anyway. So if you ladies are ready. Um, what if non-custodial parent continues to take the child to socialize and not back to their home during visitation? So they're not taking things seriously. Yeah, that's a tough one. I, you know, first step is to open the dialogue with that parent and, and in writing, put it in writing and say, mm -hmm. these are my concerns. This is what, you know, I would like to us to have the same plan and the same operations at each home. Um, follow the CDC guidelines and take this seriously. And, you know, how serious do you take it? As serious as you can. Um, right. It's it's hard. We're in a hard spot because we can't just go run into court and um, address and, and we Right. And I think we need, and Sarah, can you speak to that about the, what's happening with the court system, at least what we know in Wake County? Right. So in Wake County, anything that was scheduled prior to April 20th is being continued. They're only taking emergency cases. So that's emergency child custody cases, domestic violence cases, anything of that sort. So a lot of times I, I wouldn't consider a lot of this emergency child custody cases. I think our clients do, but by definition, an emergency is someone is um, going to take the child out of the jurisdiction, out of the state, or there's um, a, a threat of sexual or physical abuse, that sort of thing. So we, I understand that it feels like an emergency if it's your child and you haven't seen them and the other parent won't bring them back, but that won't get us in. We can't get you into court immediately over that issue. Yeah. That definitely uh, for um, decision-making, I would say in a lot of cases, if they are actually taking the child to social situations um, and, it, and it's hard because they're having to navigate, okay, they want to see their grandparent. Well, how do you do that? Well, use this, this video Zoom. That you're doing. <laughs> exactly. You waste time. You, we have to adjust and pivot in this circumstance and figure out how to live during this time period and hope it just, it goes back to normal sometime soon. But for now, we just have to make decisions based on our knowledge around us and, you know, do something different. Right. Right. I agree. Um, Elizabeth Kasha has tuned in and says, hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Kasha. <laughs> um, what I will say is there's an issue about if you're, you know, I would put it in writing, like Sarah says, if you're emailing or you're texting, that's always the best thing to do to, and, and say it in a way, this is what I understand from the CDC. This is what the health professionals are saying is what we should do. Social distance, you know, wash our hands through all of this instead of making it sort of an attack, you know. Why don't you, didn't you, you know, can't you do this? You know, let's try to, to tone down things and sort of make it more of a, a conversation. And then I would say, um, is, it, is it willful at that point when it comes to, is somebody in violation of a court order? Um, and, and we just don't know the answer. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. We've never been in front of a judge to say, you know, there's a pandemic. Here's what the CDC is saying. My other parent isn't following that. Is that a willful violation? And, and we'll find out soon enough. And yeah, I think yeah. you'll see that. Yeah, we'll see some of them. And, you know, some advice might be too, if you're really concerned about them bringing it into your home. And I know that's the case in some other cases where you have children with another spouse and you're concerned about those children's well-being and maybe there's compromised immune systems in your household, um, asthma, and so you're worried about what the child is doing with the other parent and then maybe bringing that into your home that right. you're trying to protect. Uh, and just monitor symptoms, you know, take, take temperatures of everyone and, and just monitor that and look for the signs that we're aware of that might show that there is the coronavirus in someone and just do the best you can with communicating with your co-parent about that. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to circle back to something, Elizabeth, that you said earlier um, in working with one of your clients and when you, you have that third party site that is usually part of the visitation and you were working to, you know, <clears throat> offer virtual meetings and, and stuff instead. Is that something that the third party organization, so whether it's a time together, whatever it is that they are offering, or is it something that you're saying specifically between the parents to offer that? 
I, I know that time together is not offering. I know that they are not offering it. There may be, uh, there are private supervisors that maybe they may be setting that up. But I think we're always happy to help clients navigate that and set it up for themselves. And I think it's always better if, if they can yeah. do that. But certainly, um, you know, I'm, we all know I'm illiterate when it comes to stuff like that. So. <laughs> but here you are. That's right. That's what we have help on the way. So I think I'll that they can patience. do it themselves. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it I'll have to have patience with each other these days. Yeah. Patience. Exactly. Let's start yeah. there. So with that, I will say um, for anyone watching, if you are interested in virtual options for meetings or interaction, um, Zoom does have a free option so where you don't have to have a paid license or anything. It does, the, the biggest drawback to it is it does limit the meeting time. So the free version is 40 minutes. Um, it, it, if you need that, I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> the co-parents would, would work out there. You can use your phone, exactly. I mean, you can download the Zoom app, and there's also, you know, if you have a Gmail account or you know, Google account, there's Duo, there's Hangouts, obviously FaceTime. If you have iPhones, um, there's all kinds of different avenues that you can use. That you just if you just search them. There's a million that pop up. Even as right. a client, do you keep your own mind sane? Is do it with your friends. You know, make sure that you're connecting with people out there outside your home. Um, right. Sure. Right. You know, this isn't even supposed to be about what do you do with the children when you do have them to keep them entertained all day. But I know that I'm losing track of what day it is of the week. And so maybe when you're doing your daily calendar, yet you're going to do the math portion, whatever that you put on there. Okay, Wednesday, they go to dad so that you don't forget those exchange days either. I can see myself forgetting what day it is and what day the exchange day is. So. Right. And, I, you know, I'm just saying I have, we all have four legged children and I have a 17 year old who's not going back to school. Mm -hmm. um, and so working, it, it's stressful. Um, and so I think, it, like Sarah says, talk to other parents on Zoom or on the telephone or texting, you know, and so that you're not cooped up because we are a little worried about um, a rise and that sort of thing, whether it be, you know, we're all cooped up together and making sure that we're parenting correctly and we're getting the stress relief that we need and that sort of thing. So I think that helps um, parents co-parent too if you take care of yourself. Right. So. Absolutely. Um, awesome. Well, <laughs> let's see. We don't have any other live questions right now, so we'll move on to some of the other things that we were wanting to mention. Um, what if your the other parent has the, your child or children, and now they're refusing to return the child back to you during these times? Right. What I would say, if you have a court order, um, and not just a separation agreement, but if you have a court order, um, one, if you have an attorney, see if contact your attorney and see if they can work it out with the other attorney is what I would say or that attorney if the other party isn't represented can reach out to the other parent and say let's see if we can work something out so I think that's the first step um, and then second step is you certainly have a right to contact and I would do the non-emergency number for law enforcement um, because it is an order that can be enforced but also understand that in this time you're not an, you're not an emergency for them either um, and, and a lot of times it's a domestic matter and they may not want to get involved. So again, it may come down to a show cause or doing a filing a contempt, but knowing that you won't get in front of a judge for, for many months, probably at, at this point, right. but those are some options that you could try to use. And document everything, you know, mm -hmm. reach out to your, to your co-parent and say, I want to see the child. It's for the order and, you know, get their response in writing. Don't do this over the phone or, or right. time or anything like that and just document it. It does show poor parenting, I think, and poor decision making. So if there's a time that you might modify your custody in the future, then that's just something that you can show the court an example of. Right. Um, because we need to be working together during this time period, not fighting like that. I don't think any judges are going to like to see people behaving that way. Right. And I can say that the opposing counsels that I've worked with during this time have the same attitude, I think, all around, that we all want to try to um, sort of tone this down as, as best we can because we don't have any other option we can't get in front of a judge it's not and we can't be running through the courthouse we got to figure out how to do this right and do it in the best interest of the children and i think that's where our focus needs to be yep okay awesome um so you mentioned having a court order for a child custody issue uh in that court order if there, there's a lot of times there's terms laid out about how the exchange should happen um, so during these times, 
you know, depending upon what that exchange is, should it be modified because of the health concerns? What's your opinion on that? Like, can you get in trouble if, you know, you do modify that exchange? I would do as Sarah said, if you guys can agree on that, get it in a, just put it in a text so mm -hmm. that down the road, somebody can't come back and say, oh, they didn't do this and I didn't agree to that. Then you keep your paper trail so that everybody knows that, yeah, we did agree to this. And certainly right. during this times, you can, if y'all both agree, court orders can always be modified if you both agree. No, there's no issue with that. Yeah, okay. we mentioned before we started this, uh, maybe if you're concerned about the swapping back and forth, I know there's schedules out there that you know, are 223, the 25 schedules, maybe right, you yeah. come to an agreement for the time period to do week on, week off. So there's right. less. Yeah. Just one of those exchanges. So you reduce that. That's a great idea. If you contact can do each other, reduce contact with whoever they're having contact with, if you're concerned about it, and maybe that will be easier for the child too, because we have to think about the children and how they're feeling being cooped up all the time and not going to school, not seeing their friends. So Right. And so do the FaceTime, do, you know, video conferencing with the other parent. If you're supposed to exchange, if you have a 225 and you're exposed to exchange on that Wednesday, well, then make sure that you're, you're making sure they talk to the other parent on that day. Yeah. And I will say that I'm not sure. I think it's next week, Jen, that we've lined up um, Dr. Um, Christian Wins to come in and help us talk about how you talk to children about what's going on. And because they've got a lot, I mean, imagine us, we don't know how to wrap our head around this. And if you're a six to seven to 10, a 17 year old, you're ha they're having the same issues and we need to really be cognizant of that. Yeah. yeah. And, and we can different age groups too. All children are different. You know how you talk to a five-year-old is different than how you talk to a 15. Right. Right. Absolutely. And I think Dr. Wins, that'll be next Monday. Next, next Monday or Tuesday. <laughs> Monday, <laughs> next week. <laughs> One of those days. Um, but yeah, I, I think she can also help speak to maybe how to talk to the other parent. Right. Uh, help right. Parent about these transitional times and trying to figure it all out together. So that this should, it'll be great to have her on there um, right. on to help us all with that. Um, so let's switch a little bit in line with custody is child support. <laughs> um, so how, with all of that, you know, how have you guys been seeing child support? What child support questions have you guys seen come up or how that's being affected now with businesses having to close and what support's supposed to be used for? Can you speak some to that? Yeah, I think that's going to be a, a big issue. Um, and again, it comes to the willfulness. Let's say I have a court order that says I'm supposed to pay $500 a month for child support, but I'm laid off. <laughs> and I don't have any income coming in, well, I think the court's going to take consideration of that right. and say it's not willful that you don't have it, but you need to be making sure that um, you've applied for unemployment, you know, you're looking, the people are hiring if you can do that. So you may not be able to pay what the order says, um, but paying something is always um, better. It shows the court of your, of your good intentions. That's right. And uh, you know, apply for unemployment as soon as you can. So you have that to show like, look, um, this is the best I can do because it's understandable that you can't just go out there and find a similar job right now. Right, right, so right. And I think the courts are going to be um, sort of cognizant of that. I had another issue where things have come out where daycares are closed. So on part of the child support worksheet that we have in North Carolina is work-related child care. So you, you may pay it, but the other parent may pay you through their child support. And the question is, well, they're not going to daycare. Do I have to pay that? You know, and so that's a that's a question. You know, there's an order you're supposed to pay it. So it may be, if you're still employed, you may still have to pay that amount. But then you we could go back at some time and say, you know, you might want to modify that and get it and get it retroactively sort of a payback that say that it wasn't being used in that sort of way. So, you know, if you are able to pay per the order, I would encourage people to still continue. Right, and if you're on the end, if you're on the receiving end of the child support. I think it's best to be patient in this time period. Right. That that's that's something that might happen in your case if your if your ex spouse or co parent is a you know waiter bartender right. service industry, and you go to your attorney and say he missed his child support payment. Well, our we can't run to the court, and our advice to you might not be to run to the court if he missed one month. You know this is a new area, and right. that might be a legitimate reason for him not to be able to pay or or she be able to pay. Right. Um, you really have to look at it on a case by case ba basis um, and take it from there. Right, right. I mean, we just all have to sort of be patient with one another, I think, as yeah. best we can. <laughs> Understand how the many faceted ways that everyone is affected. That's right. That's right. That's right. 
Um, well, I don't have any more questions at the time. Is there anything else that you guys wanted to add in or anything? Words of encouragement <laughs> for child custody and these? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you know, again, just everybody be patient. We're here. We're happy to help. We're always here to listen. We've got Zoom meetings. We'll talk to you on the phone. We're sort of, we're here to help you walk through that process. Um, and the other thing is we're going to be doing these Facebook live. We're all at home. <laughs> so we've got time. And so we're going to be, we're going to be up here and we're going to be talking and we hope that you'll join us. And if you have questions, um, we're going to be doing things like what can you do with your kids activities, things that aren't necessarily law related, but are family related. And that's what we're all about is a new direction. Family law is really focusing on the family and helping you guys get through this time as best you can. Right. And I think on Thursday, Jen, uh, Chris will be talking about the courts and going more into detail about how that might affect your case, but do know that we are still filing documents. So right. we can file complaints, we can file anything that we wanna file, except that we just can't get heard before then. And in a lot of cases you wouldn't be heard by that date anyway. So right. we're still moving, we're still filing things in the courthouse, we're still getting cases going. So that as soon as they can be addressed by the courts when they opened up, we can, we can have that done for you. And it doesn't preclude anyone from settling anything. Right. You know, doing a separation agreement, there is no reason why that, that if, if that's what you feel like you need to do or you're in the midst of that, mm -hmm. that you can certainly still continue to do that. That doesn't have any effect on that at all. So yeah. I would encourage people to continue to do that and it's work best, towards settlement. Yeah, and it's best to be prepared. So if you know that you're going to separate, I have some cases where people are planning to separate in the next month or two when this is all said and done they've already talked to their spouse and right you know, I go ahead and work on a separation agreement definitely yeah and we're doing virtual mediations um so there are you know as things are still moving it's just that we the court system is sort of grinding to a halt it does but it doesn't mean that you can't move your life forward and get things settled and move on that's right well said, Elizabeth. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just want to reiterate, first of all, ladies, thank you for joining me this morning. Sure. And um, I just want to reiterate that, um, you know, we are here and the, you can you contact us as you normally would. Um, dial the office number, the main number, 919-719-3470. You're going to get China. You're going to get myself. It's going to be as business as usual. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but we are still here for you. Um, and as we've mentioned throughout on Thursday, we're going to have one of our other attorneys, Chris Hicks, who's going to be joining us to talk about the courts, um, how, what has happened so far, the continuances, what that looks like, what can still be done, what is still being heard, uh, all that fun stuff. Uh, next week, we'll have Dr. Kristen Wins from Wins Family Psychology mm -hmm. to talk about the things we mentioned. Um, and then we also have Sarah is going to be talking about more in-depth emergency custody. Um, mm -hmm. on April the 1st, and we also have um, a the yoga boutique manager at the Lifetime Out in Cary. That's right. I forgot about that. Talk about meditation and alternative ways to manage stress when you're at home. So, um, and more of those things will be coming up as we get them planned. So please continue to tune in to our Facebook Lives. If you have questions, reach out to us. We'll do our best to get them answered um, and just do our part to help during this crazy time. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Jen. Bye, Bye guys. Thanks. Have a good day.